The Cold War was, as you very well may know, a mysterious time for clandestine missions. Organisations like the CIA, KGB and MI5 influenced behind the scenes on many world events. So much so that some of the greatest movies, in my opinion, revolve around the dark underworld of intelligence collection. For example, The Spy Who Came In From The Cold, which is like number three in my all time favourite movies. Well, that's enough sidetracking for one video. Project Azorian, also known by the sweet and unsuspicious name Jennifer, was the plan to recover the sunken Soviet submarine K-129. Now the letter K and submarines don't seem to mix, as this shameless plug for another one of my videos shows. Now our story starts with K-129, a Soviet Golf II class submarine from the Navy base at Petropavlovsk on Russia's Kamchita Peninsula on the 24th of February 1968. Built in 1960, K-129 was a nuclear capable diesel powered vessel with a crew complement of 83 men. The sub's destination was its peacetime patrol station near Hawaii. This is nothing different from the norm, as nuclear ready submarines tend to patrol certain areas in case it's needed for any type of military action, plus it helps promote the mad concept of mutually assured destruction. Just like how the UK always has a sub somewhere in the world ready for nuclear retaliation. Someone I know has a great video on the subject. Anyway, this particular submarine had a deadly arsenal of three SS N4 nuclear armed ballistic missiles. The patrol was meant to have regular radio check-ins back to the USSR, just letting them know everything is a-okay. Around mid-March, the Soviets began to get a little concerned as K-129 had missed two checkbacks. Increasingly worried, K-129 was instructed to break radio silence and contact headquarters. More urgent communications all went unanswered as the Soviet Navy got more concerned. The Soviet Naval Headquarters declared 129 missing by late March and authorised a search and rescue from the air, sea and subsurface search parties in the North Pacific. All this abnormal activity did not go unnoticed by the USA. They surmised, I don't know how though, that there must have been a missing Soviet submarine. Being nosy as Cold War powers were in the 1960s, US intelligence instructed USS Sonus Naval facilities in the North Pacific to review recent acoustic records to identify any possible evidence of a sunken vessel. Several rays had picked up a possible event on the 8th of March. A sizable bang had been picked up on recordings with similar characteristics of an underwater explosion and a sufficient triangulation for a probable wreck site was worked out. Eventually the activity from the Soviet Navy petered out as the sub was presumed lost with all hands. Now the US wasn't going to let a treasure trove of Russian technology sit on the bottom of the ocean were they? Well quite obviously no as Operation Sand Dollar was initiated and USS Halibut was sent on the mission. However it took around 5 months to find the wreck site and several weeks for USS Halibut to take thousands of photographs off the wreck site. After a couple of years examining the photographs, the Defence Secretary Melvin Lyard and Henry Kissinger, National Security Advisor at the time, decided on a clandestine project to recover the vessel to gain intelligence on the Soviet Union's nuclear capabilities. President Nixon gave the green light for the CIA to plan and execute Project Azorian. Right, let's just say something about the Cold War. Money seemed to have no chance of running out when it involved getting one over on the Ruskies. Because the CIA contracted Global Marine Development Incorporated to design, build and operate the USNS Hughes Glomar Explorer, a $350 million, around $1.7 billion today, ship for the express purpose of reclaiming K-129. Now you might think a project like this would be hard to cover up. Well, not so fast as the name of the ship gives us a hint to how the project was kept a secret. Howard Hughes, multi-billionaire and eccentric, lent his name to the project for the cover that the ship was to be used for the mining of manganese nodules. On November the 1st 1972, work began on the 57,000 ton, 189 meter long Hughes Glomar Explorer. 
the ship housed a massive grab claw known as the capture vehicle, constructed in sections inside the ship for use once over the targeted submarine. The design of the ship allowed the salvage operation to take place without the knowledge from anyone observing from the outside, by incorporating closing doors on the underside of the Explorer. On the 4th of July 1974, the Glomar Explorer was over the wreck site of the Russian sub, after travelling just over 3,000 nautical miles from Long Beach, California. The Explorer started to conduct its month-long salvage operations of the Russian vessel, which was at a depth of around 5,000 metres. During this period, the vessel was intercepted by two different Soviet ships. Funnily enough, it was later found out that the Soviets had heard about the attempted salvage operation, hence the intruding ships, but Russian intelligence had deemed such an operation impossible. During the project, the capture vehicle suffered a major failure resulting in sections of K129 falling back to the seabed. This was due to some of the claws fracturing under the stress and weight of the submarine. What they did manage to recover, however, yielded some interesting finds for the CIA. Nuclear torpedoes, sonar equipment, hatches and various other submarine parts were recovered including the ship's bell. Also recovered in the section was six Russian sailors whom were given a memorial service and a burial at sea with full military honours. However, each crew member was buried in a metal casket due to radioactivity concerns. Even though the results weren't as good as the CIA had intended, the mission was considered a great success as pretty much they had achieved the impossible. The project was officially kept secret for many years to come, however Project Azorian was reported in the press in 1975 by the New York and LA Times. The Hughes Glomar Explorer changed several hands over its lifetime, eventually being scrapped in 2015. Hello fellow history fans, thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did please leave a like. Do you have any suggestions for new videos? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks to my Patreons, if you'd like to support the channel financially, there's a link in the description, plus my Twitter's there as well. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.